everyone, Justin Adkins here from Just a Note by Justin, and I'm here today for Creative Scrapbooker Magazine to show you a sweet and spooky foilable card that you can create using different foilable products by Pink and Main. I am going to be focusing on the Halloween Backgrounds Foilable Kit and the Halloween Icons Foilable Kit. And these two foilables are really going to allow me to create a fun and ghostly card for you that's going to have all of those Halloween vibes. We're going to use the ghost pattern and we are going to use the sentiment, let's get spooky to create our card. I'm pulling in some infinity dies and I'm going to use them to cut out the let's get spooky foilable icon sentiment. I start by just kind of sizing up what sort of circle is going to fit perfectly around this sort of sentiment. I'm kind of moving it around a little bit. I want it to be kind of tight to the sentiment. I don't want too many sort of uh, space around it. And I finally find a circle that's going to fit perfectly. Once I get my circle all put into place, I do use my Spellbinders Platinum 6 in black die cutting machine to cut out my circular foilable sentiment. I pull in my cleanup brush by Pink and Main that I'm going to brush over each of my foilable panels. Using this cleanup brush just really ensures that there's no dust bits that are going to be on my panel or on my foil that's going to be a problem. I pull in some Lots of Love Teal Cheer Foil by Pink and Main, and I use my cleanup brush to brush the dust off the back as well. Once I'm done brushing, I take my foilable panel, I put the print side touching the silver side of the foil, and I use a rotary trimmer to cut off my foil to size. I highly recommend a rotary trimmer to make sure that your foil is cut properly, and then afterwards I'm going to have a little bit of excess I can put in my stash. My Pink and Main Mini Mink Machine has been preheated to the third heat setting and I fast forward it as my panel is fed through the machine. I let it process through entirely and once I let it cool just ever so slightly, I'm able to do what I like to call a peel reveal to show you how that lots of love teal foil transfers to this ghostly background. It's so bright, it's so cheerful, it almost has sort of like a spectral look to it, but I'm gonna kind of blow your mind in a minute because we're not gonna use this panel for this card at all. We're just gonna set it off to the side. I'll save it for a future card. Now to get working on our sentiment, I'm pulling some cobalt cheer foil and our let's get spooky foilable icon sentiment. I'm going to use my cleanup brush to brush the dust off of my foilable icon sentiment and also off the back of the cobalt cheer foil as well. Repeating the process just like before, I'm going to take the foilable icon, I'm going to put the print side so it's touching the back or the silver side of the foil, and then I'm going to pull in my rotary trimmer once again and just sort of cutting around the foil just to kind of minimize how much of it I'm going to be using. I'll save that cobalt scrap piece for another project, and then I can place my foilable icon through my pink and main mini mink machine. Once it processes through and takes a couple seconds to cool to room temperature, I do my peel reveal, peeling back that cobalt cheer foil and revealing our super spooky and sweet sentiment. Now, I did notice a couple pieces of the cobalt blue cheer foil did stick to areas that it shouldn't have on my foilable panel, and that's A-OK. -okay. I took a sand eraser and I was very easily able to gently erase the little bits of foil off of my cheer foil foil icon sentiment without damaging anything from the paper. So that's a great tip to keep in your back pocket when foiling. Next, let's talk about the magic of foilable panels. And I'm going to be pulling in the Color Blends foilable panels and using it to transfer the negative of our Lots of Love teal, which already has all of our ghostly shapes on it. We're going to transfer that nice and cleanly onto our foilable panel. I've selected a pink, blue, and purple ombre panel of sorts. I've cleaned it off with my cleanup brush and then I go and line up my panel so that the color side is touching the back silver portion of the negative of the foil. I get everything nice and carefully lined up and I put it into my transfer pouch very carefully and then it's ready to be processed through my pink and main mini mink machine. Still on that level three heat setting and of course keep in mind I do fast forward this 
so that you don't have to watch 40 or 50 seconds of it processing through. Once it cools to regular temperature, I'm going to be ready for the last peel reveal of this card. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the cheer foil from the foilable panel. It's beautiful. I love how that Lots of Love teal foil really pops and allows for those purple, pink, and blue ghosts to exist underneath it. I think it's a really fun way to use the negative of our foil to stretch our stash. So once I've got that all ready and into place, I'm going to actually die cut it down a little bit using the mod stitched rectangle dies. I'm going to use the third largest die from this die set because I don't want it to be as big as the card itself. I use my circle sentiment to make sure that my die cut I'm choosing is the appropriate size and then once I confirm that I get it nicely into place and I use some mint tape to tack down my die cut to my foilable panel. I carefully put the tape in areas that it doesn't conflict with the inner areas of the die cut because I don't want to accidentally ruin my trans for. I'm going to pull in some foil cardstock, also by Pink and Main, and I'm going to use this silver piece of foil cardstock as a frame for two different elements of our project. I'm using the second largest of the mod stitched rectangles because we are going to use this die cut as a frame for the die cut of the foilable panel we just created previously. So I'm going to process that through my die cutting machine, and then I'm going to have a nicely sized mod stitched rectangle. Here you see I'm showing you how it's going to work really nicely as a frame, but of course I'm going to try and stretch my stash and I'm going to use some of those infinity nesting circles by Hero Arts to also frame our let's get spooky sentiment. So I just want to go one size up from the circle that we used previously. So here I'm just confirming the size that I had used for that previous circle and then we're going to go up in size by one circle just to make sure that we're going to have that nice silver edge to our die cut. I'm going to pull in that mod stitched rectangle that we just cut out and I want to see if I'm going to be able to die cut directly from that panel and it looks like I'm going to. We are good to go. We're going to be able to stretch our stash a little bit. You're not even going to know that the circle is missing underneath because my foilable panel will cover it up entirely and I think this is a great way to not waste an additional piece of this beautiful metallic silver cardstock. So I use my die cutting machine to cut out out the circle from the mod stitched rectangle and I can now do one last step to make sure that I've got everything ready to go for our project. So I'm just sort of mapping everything out, ensuring that it's going to fit the way that I want it to and I know this is going to turn super cute, but we have one last piece that we've got to get ready. So I'm pulling in the Garden 6x6 pattern paper collection and there is this kind of teal and white polka dot pattern that I know would look fantastic for this card because it's going to pull in the teal and the white that we've already used and I'm cutting it down to a two size so four and a quarter by five and a half and this is going to serve as the undermost piece of our panel that we will be making for our card. With that last element cut out we're ready to move into the assembly phase of our card. I pull in my trusty Misty Precision Glue Press and I use it to adhere my Halloween Icon sentiment to the slightly larger silver foil cardstock frame. After that is nice and adhered with an acrylic block for some extra pressure, I use my Misty Precision Glue Press once again so that I can adhere my ghostly foilable panel on top of my silver foil cardstock panel of the mod stitched rectangle as well. I try to make sure to apply a nice even pressure to make sure everything's adhered and then I can use my Misty Precision Glue Press once again to adhere my mod stitched panel unit on top of that garden polka dot pattern paper that we had cut down to A2 size in our previous step. So I'm able to use that liquid adhesive to nudge everything to place and I use an oversized acrylic block to make sure that everything is nicely touching and it's going to be a flat panel. 
I pull in some foam tape for our sentiment circle because I want it to pop off the card just a little bit. I want it to be a nice sort of focal image and what better way to do that than with a little bit of foam tape. So I remove the backing and I get my circle nicely into place kind of in the center of the panel and I love it. I love how that cobalt foil looks with all of the lots of love teal and I want to finish this off with some glitter enamel dots. These are from the Just A Note Glitter Enamel Dots from Pink and Main, and I'm pulling in, there's like a gray enamel dot, there's a teal enamel dot, and there's a blue enamel dot, and I think that it pulls in all of the colors that we've used for this card. I guess I could have looked for a purple one, but I really just like the use of how that silver and the blues and the teals are all working together. I always try to make sure that my enamel dots play with the colors that we have used for the card. So I use about nine glitter enamel dots and I make sure that they're all nicely in place. And my last step is going to be using my Misty Precision Glue Press for the final time to adhere my panel to an A2 sized card base. And there you have it. We have a sweet and spooky Halloween card using some fantastic foiling products from Pink and Main. I hope this card and this video show you how easy it is to use foils and different foilable panels to create a really stunning project to send off to a loved one. Don't forget you can follow me on Instagram at Just a Note by Justin and also find me on YouTube as well for other video tutorials at Just a Note by Justin there as well. Thank you so very much for stopping by today. I hope you have a fantastic day and don't forget to stay crafty. Thank you so much once again. Goodbye.